Hi everyone. Thank you for your interest in the PagerDuty Pulse. We're excited to share with you some of our latest innovations over the past quarter that can help you leverage PagerDuty's latest modern digital operations products and capabilities to reduce toil, speed enterprise-wide response, align organizations with full service ownership across people and technology, tackle the noise and complexity, and streamline incident response across your organization and its digital initiatives. Today, we'll start off by introducing you to our presenters. We'll show you a quick overview of some of our latest innovations, followed by a quick overview about PagerDuty for those who are not familiar with us. Then we'll share some amazing presentations and product demos that will help solve some of the problems you may be facing today. Finally, to wrap things up, we'll share some resources that may help you learn more, and we also hope you'll reach out with any general or product-related questions, as well as share any feedback that can help us continuously improve the PagerDuty Pulse to make it better each time. I'm your host, Vera Chan, from the Technical Product Marketing Team. I'm delighted to introduce you to the amazing presenters who have put together really great presentations and product demos to share with you. Our amazing presenters today from the product team include Divya Bala Subramanian, Brett Kaplan, Jacob Hahn, Maya King, Nigel Knott, Julia Nasser, Katie Ryder, Brita Seltzer, and Andrew Stutz. We're excited to introduce our most recent platform updates and enhancements that extend from events intelligence for AI ops, service ownership, and customer service operations to incident response, enhanced UI, and administration. All of these new capabilities were designed to help you tackle the noise and complexity associated with real-time work via event intelligence, align your entire organization with full service ownership across your people and technology, speed up enterprise-wide response by enabling customer service ops, and streamline incident response. Here's just a short introduction to PagerDuty for those who are just getting to know PagerDuty. For those of you who already know, feel free to carry on and enjoy the presentations and demos. We are into the second decade of a digital transformation journey, with over $1.3 trillion spent on digital initiatives last year alone. To date, most of this investment has centered on digitizing manual processes to improve the customer experience and drive efficiencies. Platforms like Salesforce, SAP, Workday, and ServiceNow have modernized queued workflow, workflow that is sequential in nature and driven by the likes of a ticket, a case, an opportunity, record, or other business object. The vast majority of business workflow fits in this category. We are into the second decade of a digital transformation journey, with over $1.3 trillion spent on digital initiatives last year alone. To date, most of this investment has centered on digitizing manual processes to improve the customer experience and drive efficiencies. Platforms like Salesforce, SAP, Workday, and ServiceNow have modernized queued workflow, workflow that is sequential in nature and driven by the likes of a ticket, a case, an opportunity, record, or other business object. The vast majority of business workflow fits in this category. Analogous to driving downtown, represented here on the left, Queued workflow is a stop and go process with traffic lights governing that flow. When getting from A to B isn't a critical business impacting matter, this stop and go process is acceptable and sometimes preferred. Whether it's a lead flow process for sales, claims processing and insurance, procurement and distribution processes, all of these are appropriate for queued workflow. But PagerDuty got its start 12 years ago by solving a different problem automating human response to mission-critical urgent work represented here on the right, the type of work that isn't conducive to queued workflow because your business is at risk. On day one, we automated incident response to customer impacting technology disruption. Today, the platform has matured to incorporate the element of prevention, enabling businesses to prevent disruptions that impair customer experiences. Going forward, we will automate mission-critical, urgent work across all business functions, work that requires real-time engagement of both machines and teams in situations where every second counts. Examples of urgent work are virtually unlimited, but let's consider vaccine distribution, the real-time response required when a container temperature falls below an accepted threshold. In retail, action that is required when spiking product demand combines with supply chain disruption. In banking, it could be an unexpected market volatility that mandates real-time analysis and decisions. As we look forward, we strongly believe queued and real-time workflow will seamlessly coexist because they have to. But back to today, 
we find most business leaders don't understand the magnitude of pain and inefficiency that results from a customer impacting issue. At a high level, PagerDuty plays a role that parallels the human brain, sitting at the center of your technology ecosystem. Our brains have the ability to process up to 11 million signals per second, then it instantaneously decides which signals require action. Similarly, PagerDuty ingests signals in real time across your tech stack and instantaneously decides those that require action. The action we initiate spans three possible paths, machine automation, to run diagnostics for added context, or a pre-approved auto-remediation sequence that could avoid the need to pull the team. For example, server restart, ramp CPU capacity, etc. Mobilize teams to mobilize the right people with knowledge of the impacted services and proactively feed them the context needed to take the right action. Or a combination of both to serve up a proposed automation routine to the right responder with the option to initiate it with the click of a button, an example of safe self-healing. PagerDuty is the only company to combine machine automation and team mobilization in response to real-time mission-critical workflows. Let's take a closer look at how we fit into a typical tech ecosystem. Again, PagerDuty sits at the center. The left side of this diagram represents the signal noise I mentioned. These are examples of the tools that power your digital operations, each providing rich telemetry data about your environment, but they do so through a siloed lens that doesn't tell the full story. This includes change data from your software deployment tools, alert data from your monitoring and observability tools, insights into customer service activity, event and dependency data from your operations tools, telemetry from your cloud environments. PagerDuty ingests and contextualizes these signals leverages machine learning to filter out the noise, and then orchestrates the appropriate response, whether it's automated through our acquisition of Rundeck or human response. And when that response requires the team, it's driven by PagerDuty where your responders live, in tools like Slack, Teams, and Zoom. And with bi-directional integration to your ITSM tools, we ensure your system of record has real-time updates of response data. All of this is enabled by leveraging three foundational capabilities of our platform. The API engine, which is often viewed as our strongest differentiator. We can quickly integrate to the most complex homegrown environments without an army of consultants. And we offer over 500 out of the box integrations as well. An incident response data set gathered over 13 years across more than 13,000 customers, which feeds our machine learning engine and a service-based architecture that instantly identifies impacted technical and business services and the applicable service owners. So another way to think about it is, PagerDuty empowers the full return of investment on your tool stack by translating the telemetry they generate into the appropriate action in real time when seconds matter. This shows the PagerDuty platform's breadth of use cases and extensive product offerings. PagerDuty's broad applicability spans from AI ops DevOps and critical event management to security incident response and digital operations for customer service teams and much more. Our products range from where we first began with on-call management and incident response to automation, intelligent event management, and customer service ops. The platform is built on a strong foundation with infrastructure that scales with the growth of your organization. We strive to improve collaboration and communication across your teams and the organization, help reduce alert noise with machine learning so you can quickly focus and address issues, and help model your infrastructure as it exists in your environment with a service directory that is easy to keep up to date, as well as delivers the extra context needed to help you understand the full scope of impact of an issue and make decisions to quickly take the right actions to remediate issues and mitigate impact to customers and the business. Now let's get started with the presentations and demos. Hi everyone, my name is Nigel Knott and I'm a product manager at PagerDuty for Event Intelligence. Today, I'm excited to share details of one of our new event intelligence features, Outlier Incident. We've heard repeatedly from customers that responders have rotating on-call schedules. They're frequently switching context, so when they get paged, they're immediately heads down in the response effort, and they lack those critical details on previous experience with similar incidents. Answering the question, have we seen this before? Outlier Incident provides quick at-a-glance context to quickly understand whether your team has familiarity with this problem. Outlier Incident provides classification and analytics on the frequency of incident types as they occur. 
Anomalous events are incident types not seen on a service in the past 30 days. Rare incidents are incident types that occur less than 5% of the time. And frequent incidents are incident types that occur more than 20% of the time. With this rapid context, our goal is to help reduce time to resolution through guiding when to flag anomalies early, when to look up past response approaches, and where to look for the best candidates for automation or correction. Outlier Incident is available for all customers on our event intelligence and digital operations plans. Now for a short demo of Outlier Incident. On the PagerDuty Incident Details page, our Outlier Incident feature now provides additional context on the regularity of a particular type of incident occurring shown right by the incident title. We can detect anomalies. Incident types have not been seen on a service in the past 30 days. This may mean more effort will be required in solving this issue and guides to see what else is happening on adjacent services. Or rare incidents. Incident types where it's unlikely individual responders have experience, but someone on the team has seen it before a breadcrumb to dive deeper into past incidents to see how a colleague solved this last time. And lastly, frequent incidents. We should have a runbook available and subsequently know that these types of incidents are ripe for automation opportunities or investment to fix this nagging issue. Outlier Incident is available for event intelligence and digital operations customers. Thanks for listening. My name is Julia and I'm a product manager for our Change Events team here at PagerDuty. Today, I'm excited to share with you our latest Change Correlation feature. We first released Change Events as a way for customers to let us know when and where a change was made in their environment so that during an incident, the users don't have to go through all their different tools to find out what changed. They would have it right here in PagerDuty. And now, with the release of Change Correlation, not only will we show our responders a list of recent changes, but we will also surface important contextual information to show why a change is relevant. The change correlation shown to responders will be based on three key attributes. Time, which tells how long after the change the incident occurred. Related service, which tells about a change on a related service. And machine learning analysis of similar changes and incidents that have occurred in the past. So let's go ahead and take a look in a demo. In this example, let's imagine that I'm a platform engineer responsible for several services at my company. And on this particular day, I'm seeing that my checkout API service is having a high request response time in production. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this incident here in PagerDuty. And immediately, the first thing I see is a list of three recent changes. The first recent change tells me that similar incidents have occurred with changes like this in the past. This is based on a machine learning model that is telling the user that we've correlated changes like this to similar incidents based on your organization's historical data. The second change is based on time. It tells the user exactly when this change happened in relation to the incident. And the third change is based on related service. This is important because many times an incident will occur on a service related to a given incident and responders are not always aware of what changes are happening on those other services. And that is change correlation, a simple but powerful feature that will help your responders save time and improve their time to resolution. Thank you. I'm Julia a product manager here at PagerDuty for Change Events. In case you're not familiar with Change Events, Change Events are a unique event in PagerDuty that help you track key changes such as deploys, build completions, and configuration updates, providing contextual information that is critical during incident triage. And today I'm excited to share with you a powerful new capability the team's been working on called our Custom Change Event Transformer. With the release of the custom change event transformer, we will enable seamless integration by allowing you to turn an event in any format from your integrated tools into a PagerDuty change event. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. I'll hand off to Shayun, a developer on our team, to walk you through a step-by-step -step demo. Hello, here is a quick demo of the new custom change event transformer integration. So on this new demo service, if I go to integrations, I can add a new integration. 
and on that form, so let's call this my custom event transform. We now have a new dropdown for custom change event transformers. I'll click add integration. And once that's done, we can go back to the list of our integrations. Clicking on this, I can see more information about my custom change event transformer. So here is a look at the JavaScript. This is pretty basic. Um, so anytime I send a request to this particular endpoint, it's going to create, it's going to run this JavaScript to create my custom change event. So let's try that. Why don't we? I'm going to copy this link and come here. And then I'm going to click send and send a payload. And here I get change event process success. Awesome. So let's go to the recent changes page here. And we should be able to see our change event on the new demo service. So if we come here, here we go. Custom change event transform. Awesome. Now this is a lot more <laughs> information than we need. Uh, if we don't want to show this much detail, we can always go back to the service and go back to our integration right here. And we can edit the JavaScript and make sure that you know it's it doesn't put all everything that has to do with the request into the payload. So yeah, that's it. You go to new demo service activity. You can also see the most recent activity here, recent change that was created using the custom change event transformer. So yeah, that's it. Uh, feel free to check out documentation if you'd like to know more about custom change event transforms. Thanks. Hi, my name is Frida Seltzer and I'm a product manager for PagerDuty. And I'll be talking about the new service create flow in the UI, as well as updates we've made to the integrations tab in the service profile. We've released a new simple and intuitive service create flow to empower all users, including those who are new or less familiar with PagerDuty to create and start using meaningful technical services in the platform. This new flow not only cuts down on the time to create a service, but it guides users through the end-to-end -end flow, including setting up integrations on a service, really ensuring that users feel confident and that its service is properly configured and ready to use. And this ultimately matters because setting up meaningful technical services enables users to leverage the full value of PagerDuty and streamline their incident response. Because when those incidents do happen, there'll be no question about what piece of underlying technical functionality is broken and what team is ultimately responsible. So now let's take a look at what's new. Customers now have a simple step flow that guides them through the process of creating a meaningful service. There are four steps for customers with alert grouping and three for those without. Users can also now create an escalation policy directly from the service create flow if necessary. The specific user creating the service will automatically be placed as the first level of on-call, and that escalation policy can be updated at any time after the service is created. Users can also select one or multiple integrations from a pick list of top integrations or from our dropdown of over 370 integrations. 10 integrations can be added at a time, but if necessary, additional integrations can be added after the service is created. When a user successfully creates a service and lands in the service profile for the first time, they will view the integration they selected as well as side-by-side -side documentation for our most popular integrations or links to documentation for other integrations to help them finish setting up the integration for that service. Lastly, they'll also see clear feedback loops about what integrations on their service have or have not received an alert yet, indicating when additional work may be required to fully set up and get running with an integration on that service. And now, a quick demo. 
In this new experience, when I click to create a new service from the service directory, I'm met with a simple stepped flow. Four steps if you have alert grouping and three if you don't. Really breaking down the basic elements of a service into bite-sized chunks so we can focus the user's attention and guide them through the process of creating a service, regardless of if they're new or unfamiliar with PagerDuty or not. So let's walk through it. On this first step, we've provided a clear definition of a technical service and given it examples names. Let's enter a name and brief description to help other teams understand exactly what this service is for. In this case, I'm going to create the payment processing service and write a brief description. The service supports all payments processed through the web UI checkout. And I'll click Next. On this next step, I have two options. I can assign an escalation policy to the service from a pre-defined escalation policy, or I can generate a new escalation policy, allowing me to create the service and go end to end without, regardless of if I have created an escalation policy prior or not. Next, I can select my alert grouping option for this service with our recommended intelligent alert grouping option selected by default. And last, on the integration step, I can select one or multiple integrations at a time from our quick pick list or choose one of up to 370 different integrations from our dropdown. When I click to create a service, I'm taken to the integration tab whereby I'm met with the integration documentation now displayed side by side with my integration keys to help me complete the integration setup. I can also see that no test alert has been received for this integration, helping me know that additional work is required to get this service to begin receiving alerts from the selected integration. When I do receive the first alert on this integration for the service, I will see a success message before this notification goes away. That is the end-to-end -end service create flow. Thanks for your time and attention today, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Hi, my name is Brita Seltzer, and I'm a product manager for PagerDuty. And I'll be talking about the exciting updates we've made to the activity tab of the service profile. The updates to the activity tab allow a user to command and control a service directly from the service profile. Users now have a holistic overview of a service's activities, providing key visibility into the state and overall health of a service. Further, it streamlines incident response by allowing responders to perform critical actions for one or many incidents directly from the service profile. So let's take a look at what's new. With these updates, customers can easily see all incidents, past and present on a service clearly delineating between open and resolved incidents, highlighting those that require immediate attention from those that have already been resolved. Responders can quickly take bold actions, such as acknowledge, resolve, or snooze on open incidents and merge on both open and resolved incidents, or search, sort, or paginate to easily get to the right incident they're looking for. Further, these updates include a new recent changes section where users can easily see the 10 most recent changes on a service, or if they have yet to create a change integration, can get started by clicking through from the service profile. Lastly, the escalation policy, which is a critical piece of metadata for a service, can now be accessed directly from the service profile header. And now for a quick demo. For this demo, I'm on this gift card API service profile page. I can see now in the header the escalation policy and click through to see the users or schedules associated with it for more information. I can also quickly grasp that I have three open incidents on this service, helping me to understand the health of my service and the scope of incidents that require my attention. I can click one or multiple incidents in order to acknowledge, resolve, snooze, or merge those incidents. Or if I had more incidents open within this service, I could use the search, pagination, or sorting features in order to find the incident I was looking for as quickly as possible. 
Below Open Incidents, I can see up to 10 of the most recent changes on my service. If I'm managing an incident from the service profile, this allows me to quickly see what has happened on my service leading up to this incident. In this example, this change was posted at 12.42 a.m. At 12.46 a.m., I can see that there was a P1 triggered on my service. That might indicate that this change event caused this incident and would provide a jumping off point for further investigation. I can also click to view all changes on this service or add additional change integrations. And lastly, I can view all resolved incidents, providing a complete history of incident activity on this service. I can also select two incidents to merge, or again, if I had multiple or many incidents within this table, I could use the search, pagination, or sorting feature in order to find the resolved incident I was looking for as quickly as possible. That concludes our updates for the Service Profile Activity tab. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day. Hello, my name is Brett Kaplan and I'm a product manager here focused on building products to empower customer service teams to deliver seamless online experiences. In today's world, customer satisfaction is a key revenue driver, but customers expect nearly perfect experiences. The increasing shift to online over the past year has put more strain on customer service and those shifts are here to stay. Customer service organizations are looking to transform, but they struggle to meet customer needs based on their existing software and often manual workflows. They're still operating in reactive mode, which creates a bad experience for agents and customers. Teams are stressed and often find themselves in communication silos, unable to collaborate effectively with development and IT teams. Slow issue resolution and lack of proactive customer updates lead to customers leaving. Customer service teams need to get ahead of customer issues. Often, when customer issues arise, there's organizational chaos that happens as teams scramble to figure out what's going on. By connecting customer service agents directly with the technical teams on call, PageDuty creates a unified front to reduce organizational chaos. As issues become clear, companies can inform their customers before those customers have even realized that there's a problem, reducing customer effort and confusion. With these changes, customer service teams can improve customer satisfaction and exceed SLAs. A unified team delivers a better experience. The customer service team can keep customers informed. The technical teams can learn about issues faster and understand the scale of issues as they emerge. With faster resolution times, fewer customers experience the pain of outages. In the same way that DevOps helps development in IT embrace a spirit of continuous improvement, PageDuty supercharges customer service teams to continue learning from their customers. Now let's double click on those customer service teams. With PagerDuty, teams can set up 24-7 after-hour support at a fraction of the cost of a fully staffed solution by putting agents on call. Teams use PagerDuty to increase coverage overnight and on weekends while keeping costs down. With PagerDuty, teams can understand the blast radius of customer impacting issues and deliver the right notifications to both internal and external stakeholders. You can keep stakeholders in the loop and up to date as the issue approaches resolution. With PagerDuty, service agents can reduce SLA breaches with tools to escalate urgent issues. PagerDuty empowers agents to own the case, engaging relevant experts when needed to diagnose and triage effectively. Let's talk about what's new at this summit. PagerDuty's new customer service offerings help your business break down communication silos between teams improving the customer experience. Let's start with PageDuty's new customer service business plan, which includes all releases you'll see today. With this new plan, your team can manage workloads more effectively with round-robin scheduling, automate swarming with response plays that engage experts in a single click, and give agents direct access to the details of ongoing issues 
to help them manage more effectively. We're also announcing our PagerDuty application for Salesforce Service Cloud, which I'll show you a demo of in just a moment. With PagerDuty for Service Cloud, you'll get a fully functional PagerDuty app directly inside Service Cloud, so agents on the front lines can engage experts as soon as they need them and leverage a status dashboard to understand the blast radius of issues as they occur. Now, I will show you a demo of this new plan. Meet Ellen. Ellen is a customer service agent managing communications with Salesforce Service Cloud. She is working in queue when she sees a ticket come in from a VIP customer. After investigating, she learns that the customer is seeing that dreaded spinning wheel whenever they try to submit a time-sensitive order. Before PageDuty, Ellen would have to go into Slack, Microsoft Teams, or Jira, figure out who the right engineering team is, describe her customer's problem, and wait for a response. Now, with one click on PagerDuty's status dashboard, she can see that her engineering team is already aware of an issue impacting the shopping cart service. Without leaving Salesforce, she can subscribe to this incident to receive regular updates via a contact method of her choosing. Ellen has the peace of mind to go back to working the queue, knowing if there's an update on this incident, she'll be alerted right away. From here, Ellen can also link this incident to her case. Now she can see incident details directly alongside the case, including a detailed timeline of when the engineering team found this issue and which individuals on the engineering team are included. By linking this incident, Ellen can also send case details directly to the engineering team working within PagerDuty. Now, the engineering team is aware of the blast radius of this issue and can prioritize this work accordingly. From the command console, Ellen can directly engage relevant stakeholders. Ellen knows that her account management team has a series of important deals in flight, so she runs the impacted VIP customer response play. Now executives know about this issue so they can be prepared for customers reaching out to them for more details. Ellen can add notes directly to this case to give her engineers updates, and all notes will be dynamically pulled into her case. Ellen can see status updates from the engineers, and when a fix is in place, it will appear immediately, and the status of the case will be changed to resolved. Now that the case is resolved, Ellen can respond to this customer and mark the case as closed. With PageDuty, Ellen's company streamlines communication with engineers to break down silos between teams. Ellen solves tickets faster, and Ellen keeps her customers happier. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Stutz, and I'm a group product manager focused on PagerDuty for customer service operations. I'm excited to walk you through today about what's new in PagerDuty for customer service operations, specifically new enhancements we've made to our Zendesk integration. Over the past several years, thousands of customers have come to PagerDuty to help them break down the walls between customer service, IT, and engineering. Historically, these teams wait to hear about problems from customers, often working in reactive mode between each of them, which leads to slow resolution times, can lead to burnout across the teams, stress between each of these teams, and ultimately leads to a poor experience for your customers. PagerDuty for customer service operations is all about moving to a proactive approach in customer service, helping create a united front across each of these teams, helping your customer service agents to proactively inform the right customers with the right communications, and ultimately helping you and your business improve customer satisfaction, maintain your SLAs, and keep your customers happy. We're excited to announce the new PagerDuty status dashboard inside Zendesk. This gives every customer service agent real-time visibility into technical outages and how they're impacting your business and your customers. Rather than having customer service 
be completely unaware of what's going on as they work the ticket queue, they're now stakeholders in your business response and incident response, helping give them the right real-time visibility and understanding of what's going on so that they can proactively communicate the right status updates and communications to the right customers. If you wanna start breaking down the walls between customer service and development and start making every customer service agent a stakeholder to instant response, as well as starting to save your customer service team hours from trying to understand what outages are occurring and how they're impacting customers, please go to the Zendesk Marketplace and install the newest version of our integration you can also reach out to sales at pagerduty.com as well as to your sales representative to learn more about our new license specifically for customer service teams. As a customer service agent, it's extremely important for me to understand if there's a technical outage going on right now and if it's impacting customers. Here, I'm responding to a ticket where a premium customer can't check out. With the power of PagerDuty for customer service operations, I can immediately see that there's a problem going on right now with fulfillment. As I click on PagerDuty's status dashboard to learn more, I can see that there's a P1 incident going on right now on fulfillment. There's no problems going on in inventory. There's nothing going wrong with the e-commerce marketplace. And then in fact, checkout isn't working on fulfillment. As I click here to learn more, I can subscribe as a stakeholder and get updates in the notification channel of my preference as this incident progresses to get the right communications and the right status updates from engineering and also to get a nudge from PagerDuty when I need to reach back out to that customer to close the loop. As a customer service agent, I can also link this technical incident to the premium customer's complaint that there's something going on with checkout. This helps to start quantify the impact of technical incidents into your customer base, as well as makes it more easy for me to get updates and notes from engineering. As engineering progresses along, as we can see here, Mary's been working on this incident. As Mary gets to resolution, once she resolves that incident, she can leave a key status update that's gonna get delivered to both customer service as well as any other key stakeholder throughout your company who's subscribing to PagerDuty's incident status dashboard. This was due to a bad deploy. Should be all fixed now. Won't happen again. What that's gonna do, it's gonna resolve that incident and push those updates to all of those key stakeholders, including customer service. As we go back to our incident status dashboard, we can see that all the business services are now green. We can see fulfillment is clear and that all of our other business applications across the business are operational. And as I go back into Zendesk, the customer service agent would have been notified by PagerDuty, given I subscribe to that incident to come back and check the ticket and the incident. I can see that the linked incident is in fact resolved. I can see the resolution notes from engineering that was posted. And I can get back to this customer and say, all fixed, sorry about that, won't happen again. And go ahead and close out the ticket. Without having the power of PagerDuty for customer service operations and our new status dashboard inside of Zendesk, I would have been working my ticket queue in Zendesk with no idea that there was a problem going on with fulfillment, that checkout wasn't working, and that Mary and John and the other engineers were actually already on it. This saved me hours of time triaging and having to escalate in other channels like in my chat ops tool or trying to find the right team to escalate this to in terms of checkout or that fulfillment service. Hi everyone, I'm Divya Balasubramanian, Senior Product Manager here at PageDuty. I'm here to talk today about what our team has been working on in the last two quarters. Developer Infrastructure Team, or shortly called as DevInfra, has been working on in the latest new webhook version called version 3 or webhook speed 
Let me also quickly introduce another presenter that I have with me, Paras Prajapati, an engineer in our team, who will be doing the walkthrough demo of the latest developments in the Vox Bakery. Before we look at a product demo, I want to set some context on what are webhooks. Webhooks are one of the few ways web applications can communicate with each other. It allows applications such as PageAgility to send real-time data from our platform to other tools whenever a given event occurs pertaining to a certain scope. And so, as you can imagine, with our growing richer integrations and apps, there has been a consistently increasing demand for varied push data. And our current webhook system has a number of limitations, such as currently the webhook events only related to events can be sent by page duty. And there has been a need for additional resources to be sent. And also one of the biggest pain points that we have heard from our customers is the arbitrarily large payloads for our composed webhooks, which causes a 0.01% drop rate due to the large size. And as you can imagine, the larger payload also causes for increased webhooks processing time at the destination endpoint as well. And currently the webhooks version V1 and V2 can only be scoped to a service and not to an account or a user or a team as our newer integrations demand, such as our chat ops and collaboration tools. And also there has been a need for subscription to different types of webhooks that is not available to our end user configured generic extensions. And so there has been a new need for the webhooks v3, which helps in supporting richer data types for our integrations, robust customizations that allows customers to not only subscribe to a scope that's outside of service and thus supports team account or an incident. And also it allows for customers to select a certain event types and not have the need to receive all event types as well. We have optimized the payload, thus improving our delivery success rate. Now let's look at a quick demo of the version V3. Webhooks UI, a new interface for Webhooks V3. So Webhooks V3 brings some great new features to the existing Webhooks platform. They are the successor to V2 extensions in the current UI, and we now have the ability to scope a Webhook subscription by account, team, or service. This basically prevents users from having to create multiple webhooks with the same endpoints if they want to, let's say, keep track of all services under one team. Of course, possibilities are endless. The outbound webhook also has been reduced in size to help process them faster. And of course, we now have the ability to develop webhook subscriptions in a brand new UI. And without further ado, let's do a quick demo. So here under slash integration slash webhooks, we under the mappings tab, we have a list of all the subscriptions in my account right now. We can go ahead and add a new webhook. And the first thing you'd have to do is enter in a destination URL. As mentioned before, we also have the ability to scope our subscription uh, so we can use service or team. In this case, we'll use service and you can see the drop down below now populates with all services available to my account. Let's go ahead and use a shopping cart service and enter in a description. By default, the events uh, is set to send all events, but we also have the option to fine tune and send selected events if we want. So we can go ahead and only do incident triggered and resolved, for example. So clicking add webhook will bring up a pop-up that allows us to copy the uh, signature if we want. Um, and pressing OK brings us back to the list where you can see here that our new subscription is now active. You can see that all the data is still relevant and it's pretty much ready to go. Thank you, Paris, for that fantastic demo. So what's next? Webbook Suite 3 is now being developed for GA closer to Summit. And we are also working on providing additional support for new resources and event types that were not supported in our earlier versions, such as Webbox V1 and V2. We have also provided additional documentation that can help our customers to migrate from their existing webhooks, which are supported in older versions. And the next thing that we are working on is to provide better visibility into the webhook requests and responses 
thus allowing our PhD users to have better understanding of the webhook success rate and the response that we have received. And one of the other things that needs to be noted here is with a release of the new webhooks version being GA, we are having now a deprecation plan ready for our older versions V1 and V2. The deprecation of V1 webhooks is targeted towards mid November, and the deprecation of V2 webhooks is targeted towards end of March 2022. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, my name is Sam Ferguson and I'm a product manager for analytics here at PagerDuty. I'm excited to be showing you what the analytics team has been busy working on, Slack Insights Previews. Previously, analytics context has been siloed to PagerDuty's web interface, making it hard to collaborate and share important analytics metrics with your team. Slack Insights Previews is our solution for this. Now, users can copy and paste insights directly from PagerDuty into Slack and see a preview image appear. This functionality supports collaboration and discussion in both channels and direct messages, empowering you to make data-driven decisions and guiding you along your path to digital operations maturity. Let's jump into a demo to see this feature in action. In PagerDuty, if you navigate to Analytics, PD Labs, and you select Explore My Insights, you're given a view that includes incident activity, service performance, team health, and business impact metrics as well as filters for team, urgency, priority, and date range. Here, let's select high urgency incidents for the last week. The new functionality we recently introduced is if you select copy URL, and you take this URL and paste it into Slack, after just a few seconds, you see an image come up that includes detailed description of some of the incidents we were just viewing in PagerDuty's web UI. Because this is Slack, I can then go in and say something like, hey, Amir, Great job responding. If you're a mirror and you get this notification, you may want to dig in and view some more of the details around these incidents. Because this is a URL, you can click on the URL and be taken back to the same exact view we were just looking at in PagerDuty's web UI. Importantly, for each of these four tabs, we provide a unique view in the Slack Insight preview provided. For example, for this business impact tab, when I paste this into Slack, instead of showing a list of the incidents, you see the total response effort for the corresponding services, just as we provided in the web UI. As you can see, this unique experience provides different and additional ways to share and collaborate about metrics in Slack. That's it for my demo. Thank you all for taking the time to watch, and I hope you're excited about Slack Insights previews. Hi, my name is Jacob, and I'm the product manager for the mobile team here at PagerDuty. I'm really excited to share with you an exciting new improvement to our mobile app, which now includes our past incidents feature. The past incidents feature allows incident responders to view past resolved incidents that are similar to the active incident. So if a responder is paged for an incident, and this is something that's happened before, they can use this past incidents feature to look into those incidents and see how they were previously resolved. They can also jump into the full list view to see how frequently this has happened over time. This would be very helpful information for triaging the current incident, which could lead to shorter resolution time as well. You can find this feature by navigating to the details of an incident in the mobile app. This feature is now available on iOS and Android for our customers with a digital operations plan or the event intelligence add-on. We recommend that our users take advantage of PagerDuty features like notes and status updates to populate the incident with as much context as possible so they can be reviewed when diving into past incidents. Now I'll demo the past incidents feature. To view past incidents, just navigate to an incident and you'll see it in the incident details. If you tap the information button in the top right corner, you'll get a short description about the feature. You also have the option to tap the learn more button and it'll take you straight to our knowledge base to get more information. So we currently show you a preview with the most relevant incident that's the closest to your active incident. If you tap on it, you can navigate to that incident to see how it was resolved. And if you tap view past incidents, you can see a list view of past incidents, which can help you determine how frequently this has occurred over time. So you can sort this list by the most recent and the most relevant incidents.
And lastly, this is how the feature looks when the app is in light mode. So that will be all for the demo today, and thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Jacob, the product manager for the mobile team here at PagerDuty. I'm really excited to share with you some awesome updates to our mobile apps. We have some new features regarding status dashboard improvements and mobile on-call boosters. At the end of this presentation, I'll go through a demo as well. So first up is regarding some improvements that we made to our status dashboards in the mobile app. So users are now able to switch between custom status dashboard views for a quick visibility into the current status of incident impacted business services across the organization. This is especially useful for our large customers that have many business services. And after receiving a lot of requests for this functionality, we're excited to say that it's finally available. In addition, users are now able to subscribe to business services directly from the mobile app, which was previously only an option through the web application. These improvements are now available on both iOS and Android, and we recommend our users take the time to go through the business services available in the status dashboard and subscribe to the ones that they want to be updated for. For this demo, I'll show some of the new features that I spoke of earlier, starting with the status dashboard improvements. So first, navigate to the status dashboard. On the top right corner, you should see a new option that will allow you to switch between the main dashboard and custom status dashboards. So you won't be able to set up these custom dashboards from the mobile app, and we recommend that you do this from the web application. So with custom status dashboards, you can do a subset of business services that you're interested in. In addition, if you go into a business service, you have the option to subscribe to a business service in the top right corner. This will allow you to never miss an update regarding the business services that you own. The next feature I'll talk about is mobile on-call boosters, which is a new type of push notification that we're releasing to help users be aware of and take action regarding changes that affect them while they're on call. Push notifications will be sent to a user's push notification channels when a change is made to their on-call shift within the next eight weeks or when they are added or removed from a schedule. We have released this feature for all customers in March of 2021. This feature is now available on iOS and Android. You will start to get these notifications automatically, and you'll never have to worry about missing an on-call shift again. If you do not want to receive the on-call boosters, please navigate to the on-call boosters toggle in the mobile app settings, and you have the option to turn the feature off. I'll be going through the on-call boosters feature. So from my computer, I'm going to have a different user schedule an override for my shift. So once that happens, I should be getting an on-call booster that lets me know that my shift has been updated. So I just received the notification, and from there, I can tap into it to go to the app and see what has changed with my shift. So if I want to turn off the feature, then I would navigate to the settings within the mobile app and go to the on-call boosters toggle and just turn the feature off. So that will be all for the demo today, and thank you for your time. Here are some additional resources and information about how you can provide us with feedback. These are some extra resources for you to reference and read at your own leisure to learn more about our innovations from the past quarter. We welcome you to contact us for any product-related questions by reaching out through email to support at pagerduty.com or by contacting us at webinars at pagerduty.com with any general feedback to help us improve and provide you with a better experience next time. Thank you again for learning more about PagerDuty's latest innovations from our amazing product team. Thank you to all the product managers who contributed such great content and demos. We look forward to having you join us again in the future.